Good morning, everybody. Um, two amazing presentations, as I think you'll uh, agree. Um, I'm not actually going to try and um, compete with those, because they were awesome. I'm going to do something slightly different with you, actually. Um, I, uh, our organization is based in London, but we operate globally. And we work with companies to say, how can we make sure that our organizations are A, diverse, but more importantly, B, inclusive. So I'm going to do something different with you. We've talked about not just the moral case, but I believe, based on the evidence from McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, and a whole bunch of others, when we have organizations which are diverse and inclusive, it makes us smarter, absolutely for sure. But we also heard there's a whole bunch of stigma which gets in the way. So I want to check out where you are at in relation to your diversity inclusion journey. So <clears throat> on your chairs, uh, you've got some handouts. And you'll notice we've got a little inclusivity checklist. So I'm going to take you through the checklist. And as I take you through it, uh, those of you that have pens, if you've got a pen, uh, you can do a little checklist. And you can tick to see how many out of the 10 uh, you score, and then we'll do a kind of a little exercise uh, towards the end, okay? And if, if you don't have a pen, uh, don't worry, uh, you can just do it mentally. You can do a mental kind of count in terms of where you are. So let's go. The first one is this. First of all, in your own organizations, do you actually have any communication or a written statement that says, we actively value diversity and inclusion? So, you know, Think about the power of a diversity inclusion statement and how that, if it's on your website, in, in your brochures, how it helps to attract and retain diverse talent. So just having the statement is a first, um, first point on the journey, essentially. The other thing, though, is statements are one thing, but they're not good enough. So what organizations need is a diversity and inclusion strategy or a set of goals to say, how do we actively, what is our intention to go out and seek diverse talent, etc.? So what is your strategy? What is your goals? Do you have KPIs around that? And how are you operationalizing that? So tick one if you have a, a commitment statement, two if you've got a strategy or goals. The second thing is when we have uh, diverse people and people with disabilities in particular in our organizations, how do we utilize that talent? And we know that um, ERGs are a particularly good mechanism to make sure that we can do knowledge share, knowledge transformation, really using the groups that we have uh, in our organization. So do you have a disability ERG? Or you might have an LGBT or gender ERG in your organization. <clears throat> uh, number four is um, offer recognition for accessibility or disability stewards. So, Diversity champions, essentially. Do you have diversity champions in your organization? And do you, you know, champion their big ideas, their thoughts, etc.? Uh, point five, um, and this is important for my legal compliance, particularly around disability. When we're seeking out diverse talent, how do we make sure we essentially make reasonable adjustments? So what are the adjustments that we're making, A, in relation to talent attraction, but also once we have people in the organization what are we doing to look after them? So those accommodation things are really important uh, as well. Um, point number six, uh, once you've got your kind of reasonable adjustments, is uh, communicate a plan to assist employees with disabilities in the event of an emergency. So, and as it says here, it's like, um, your company fa um, family leaves nobody behind. So that's really quite important in terms of what do we do in those situations, particularly around mobility, uh, visual impairments, sight impairments, etc. making sure we're really looking after people, essentially. We at Vecida also have a key principle, which is this. What gets measured gets done. So even if you have your ERGs, your policy commitments, your strategies, without effective goals and targets around how you hire people in or moving people up the pipeline, you're really not going to be moving the agenda forward. So making sure you've got concrete targets around not just disability, but LGBT, some of the other themes that we've talked about as well. Careers websites, are your careers websites fully accessible? Uh, use your ERGs to make sure that your colleagues are testing them out. 
uh, making sure that all the communications processes are accessible, again, based on sight, visual impairments, uh, everything else. Um, have a process to review the accessibility of your vendors. We know that suppliers, in particular, have a lot of power in this area. So are you using your leverage to say to the recruitment companies that you work with, what are you doing around promoting diversity and inclusion? So using the supply chain to really push this agenda forward is, is a key mechanism. And then finally, raise awareness. Think about how does unconscious bias play out in relation to the, some of the stories that we've heard. You know, how does stigma and bias play out in relation to uh, ex-offenders, people with disabilities, LGBT communities, people from different cultural backgrounds, etc. You know, raise awareness of unconscious bias. And actually, I'll give you some homework. You'll see that there's a link there to what's called the Harvard IAT. If you go online, um, it's a pretty cool test. It's the only test globally which can actually measure your level of unconscious bias. The test is free of charge, so there's no excuse for not doing it, and it takes about 10 minutes. So maybe it's home where you can do the test, share the results with a colleague, and see what, uh, see what comes up, OK? That is your checklist. I want to get a sense of where you are uh, in this audience. So what I'm going to ask you to do is all of you, can you please just stand up just for a second? So everybody in the room, just stand up. Yeah? And I want to get a sense of where, where we are collectively in relation to meeting your checklist. Right, here we go. First of all, in terms of whether you've done it with a pen or a mental checklist, if you have scored four or more points on the checklist, stay standing up. If you had scored four or less, unfortunately, you need to sit down. Oh, wow, interesting. Wow. I don't want to freak you out, but score's not a great number yet, so we'll keep going. If you've scored five or more on the checklist, stay standing up. If you've scored five or less, take a seat. Awesome, we've got a few outliers, let's keep going. Right, six or more, stay standing up. Six or less, take a seat. Let's keep seven. If you've got, oh, we've got a few going down there. OK, so we've still got a couple there. Well done. So let's keep going. We've got seven out of 10 so far. That's a good score. Right, eight, eight out of 10. On the edge, almost, yeah. Let's, let's give them a round of applause for eight so far. Stay standing up. Eight out of 10. That is a decent score. I'm going to keep going. Right, have you got nine out of 10? No, no worries. Eight out of 10 is an amazing score. Give them a second round of applause, everybody. Hmm? Stand up, please. The eight out of 10. Um, can we get a microphone or figure out what company are you from? Let's give them some credibility and some recognition. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're working for Idealo. It's a price comparison website. Excellent, brilliant. So another piece of homework is then, those of you that scored four or less, find these two people in the break, have a conversation with them, and, talk, and have, a, have a chat about what they're doing. Take this checklist. When you leave today and tomorrow, take this checklist, take it back into your own organizations, and ask your leaders, ask your HR teams, ask your you know, um, members of procurement, what are you doing to make sure that we become a best practice organization? And this gives us a framework to do that. If you want to know more about promoting inclusive cultures, come to the ESCO bar at 1 p.m., because we're going to give you a, more, a second checklist there. Thank you all very much. <laughs>